Hi everybody and welcome back to Geezer Rider. This video is going to be a little bit outside our wheelhouse. So um, the original video that I made for the channel, you know, welcome to Geezer Rider, what we're all about, that kind of thing, is getting a little long in the tooth, a little outdated. And, um, you know, I said quite plainly originally, you know, we're, we're going to be focused on content, not production values. And you know, the reality is, as time marches on, you realize that without production values and some um, quality, um, along with the content, the detailed content that we're known for, you're not going to get the viewership. So the reach is not going to be there. You know, uh, I said the goal was not to get monetized or just, you know, get the numbers up, but get the message across more. Uh, and we still are sticking with that philosophy um, but we also need to get the numbers up to make it worth doing and that is advancing motorcycling um, amongst the motorcycling community and the general populace as a positive thing you know get get the positive aspects out there you know promote safety and keep this going for generations to come so part of the journey was a little linear, you know, looking back on it, if I had done a little bit more research before I got started, uh, it would have been more apparent to me. But obviously, you know, this video camera is a Samsung Galaxy S8 and has been a Samsung Galaxy S8 for the duration of the channel. And what that means is, you know, we haven't put a whole lot of money into equipment and we're looking to make a move. So the first thing we did, and for anybody starting off a YouTube channel, you know, I'm not the pontiff of what to do for YouTube, but I can tell you what makes a big difference. Just doing a lot of editing lately and, and getting more proficient, slightly more proficient with editing software and putting a little more value on that um, is audio. Audio is everything. You know, people will look at a slightly off video or some of the mistakes you make with video, white balance, position sensing, things like that. Um, th they'll do that as long as the content is good, if they can hear you and they can hear you clearly. So one of the first things I did was invest, and I use that term very loosely, in a lavalier microphone or what's sometimes known as a lapel microphone. And it just made a big difference. It, it reduced that spatial relationship between the camera and um, the speaker and improved sound quality greatly. And this is not a big investment, folks. I think the lavalier mic on its own was six or seven bucks. You can look it up on Amazon. It was called Pop Voice or something like that. I'll see if I can't, you know, pop up a link or, or you know, a description on the video when, when I get into editing on this and an extension cord that would work with uh, audio. Um, was it 3.5 millimeter audio extension cord that would work with the lavalier microphone and the Android um, phone, in this case, an S8. And I think the, the extension cord is roughly six feet and the lavalier mic has about a six foot cord length on it. Just made a huge difference. What I noted over time was I did a video on um, a cell phone holder for the for the motorcycle that had integrated wireless charging or qi charging and i wanted to go out and i wanted to walk around the bike and show you guys things that i was doing show you guys and gals things that i was doing on the bike um, and the cord was just continually getting in the way and the more i worked on that project the more i realized the value of um, wireless so to speak um, mic and just being able to move around freely and not fuss with that and i also noticed prior videos i used um the i like to keep my hands busy and i would use the end of the wire as a crutch and just kind of sit here and fidget with it and whatnot and then some of the videos i did on heated gear when i was talking about connections i would hold the wire up as an example the connection even though it had nothing to do 
with the heated gear wires. It was just, you know, hey, this is a wire. I'm talking about a wire. Let me hold up a wire. And it came away a little bit confusing. So I decided, you know, let me get this out of my hands. Let me be able to walk around my subject material more freely. And how am I going to do that? So I did a lot of research and watched a lot of review videos and basically wound up with, I wanted something compact. I could wind up, you know, mounting to my helmet for vlogs if I wanted to, um, using on the end of some kind of a stick or something as an interview mic if I wanted to. I wanted the ability to Y feed multiple mics into it, like, you know, either use its integrated mic or use a splitter and add a couple lavalier mics or use a lavalier mic with it. And I wanted um, gain control. I wanted uh, a fair amount of range. I don't need to be more than 100 feet away from it normally for, for the types of videos that I do. Um, and I understand almost all of its line of sight. Um, but I wanted it to be clear. I wanted it to be consistent. I wanted it to have good audio range and work and, you know, have, have a, a decent run time on a rechargeable battery. I didn't want to have to be replacing double A AA or triple A lithium batteries. Um, you know, every, every few videos that gets expensive pretty quick, but I wanted the runtime for the rechargeable batteries to be significant four hour minimum. So I wound up looking at the road wireless go. And if you're looking at this video and you're, you're seeing what I'm about to talk about and you're like, Hey, that looks a lot like the wireless go. You'll realize that they've kind of been the, the go to, and there are knockoffs of a knockoff of a knockoff of a knockoff of the wireless go. Um, One's called Photo Well. There's another one called Pixel and on and on and on. And you get to a, a series of them where the only thing different on it is the name on the front of it. And if you watch my um, phone mount holder review, you know, with the integrated QI wireless charging, you realize that's a case in point where at this point in time now, that's offered under 15 or 20 different names and it's just a matter of what they throw in with the package or not. They don't include in the package like the double ball mount, but it's got, you know, the one I, I reviewed is called IMS2 and there's, you know, some that are just blank. Others have other names silkscreen on, but you know, they're the same product. And I think we've basically boiled down the road knockoffs to that same category where it's just, you know, oh, we threw in a hard case. We threw in the cable that road charges extra for, um, but road's cable is coiled and this is a straight coil, but it gets you by that kind of thing. Um, so I apologize for all the ahs and ums. It's another thing talking about editing that I'm working on. So, what happened was I, I wound up determining that these things were all, once you got below the, the literal actual brand name Rode Wireless Go, everything that was under that, that was like a clone or a knockoff of that was nearly the same within a couple of percentage points. They all had roughly the same reviews in regard to audio quality. And I'll let you look, look at them because there's even more of them out there. What, caused me to pull the trigger was the price point. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, I often show frugality and, you know, uh, my coupon sense awareness, but I also don't want to throw, you know, good money after bad. I don't want to make a purchasing decision where six months from now, you know, if I'd only spent the extra 50 bucks, I wouldn't be replacing this thing right now and have a throwaway dollar amount for what didn't work. So in doing my research, you know, again, I found most of these clones within a percentage or two of each other and found one of these knockoffs under well under hundred dollars. And the road is pretty much a fixed price point, either by coincidence or by design. It's roughly $199 to $200. If you search around really hard, maybe you'll find one for like $179 somewhere. But for the most part, you know, it's, it's nearly a $200 barrier to entry. Fast forward into the clones and you see them for half as much under varying bra uh, brand names. And as of the time I made my purchase, I found one on Amazon that was well under the $100 price point. And that was the Altson, A-L-T-S-O-N, Profession 
They left off the AL, so we're obviously working with an overseas provider here, probably speaks to the price point. UHF wireless lavalier microphone transmitter and receiver system with OLED display, omnidirectional lavalier mic comp compatible with cameras, smartphones, one receiver and one transmitter. $89.99, 90 bucks, well under $100. And I found this to be indistinguishable from the Pixel, the Sokani, the PhotoWelt, all the others that look exactly like this, that have the little graphical interface on it, receiver transmitter. Um, the thing that they do that the Rode doesn't is they include a hard case, they include some cables, and they have um, sync and audio levels on the receiver and the transmitter, not just one or the other. So somebody took this and, you know, shamelessly copied the Rode Wireless Go, let's be frank, and tried to make a couple improvements and tossed it out there. So somewhere these things are being, you know, created in bulk and now they're just working on price points. So again, I found this on Amazon for $89.99. You can obviously work the internet yourself. Um, so let's go and do an um, unboxing. I haven't pulled this out yet. And what I want to do is handle this in two segments. We want to look at what's in here, and I think this is going to be no different than every other unboxing for the Rode Wireless Go clone that you've already seen. And then we'll do a quickie audio test, which should be no different than all the other Rode Wireless Go clones that you've already seen. But what I want to do is uh, I want to promote our channel and I want to, you know, increase the quality and um, the ability to do different videos by making this investment in our channel. But for anybody else that wants to create a channel re, uh, related to motorcycling and promote the positive aspects of motorcycling, I want you to learn from my travels and travails. And, you know, you can jump into this, you know, in this case, a hundred dollars cheaper if it works out than, um, if you just went out there on your own with no other experience. So at some point I'm the geezer and geezer rider. There's going to be another generation that's going to have to take this over. Let's start preparing that next generation to go out there and, and give the good word out there about motorcycling. Um, quick word before I pick out my little pocket knife here, everybody always asks questions about it. So yes, it is what you think it is. Uh, it is legal where I am. And if you want one, uh, I, don't get any promotions or anything. These guys are at the most of the motorcycle rallies that I go to. It's bikerjewelry.com. Um, pretty cool little, you know, survival type knife. Very compact form factor, bit of heft to it, I think made here in the US, or at least it was designed here in the US, semi-rubberized feel to it. It's got the um, safety glass breaker on the bottom. And obviously, you know, you don't have to worry about unfolding it. You get it out of your pocket, you can use it. There are, um, there's a belt clip on it. You can take off if you want, etc. So anyway, just need, felt the need to speak to it because people kind of look like, you know, what are you doing with this thing? Who are you trying to impress? What are you trying to say? And I am not trying to be anything or do anything. It's just a knife to open a box for me. So aside from the broken English on the description on Amazon, the labeling on the box itself is pretty good. There's a couple of QR codes on there as well. And you can, um, you know, get some information off of there. Quite literally made in China, as is most electronics these days. And again, I think that's, that's why we're talking to the price point. So I don't know with everything that's going on, whether supply chain is going to be an issue or not, whether you should gobble up one now, or you should wait a few months and see if this thing drops down to 50 months, $50. So the first thing different than the wireless go from what I'm able to discern is that they don't include this case. And if you're watching any of the other videos, You'll, this will look very familiar to you. It's the same style case with the same style fixed non-removable lanyard and the red piping around the zipper area of what appears to be a very quality zipper. Opening it up, everything's packaged inside little 
um, styrofoam containers. There's a high density, small text user manual. Good luck with my old eyes reading that in one pass. It'll be some porcelain thrown reading material, I think. You have receiver and transmitter. You have the hot shoe, cold shoe attachment. And then a variety of cables and little bags. And again, I think if you go through any of the other videos on any of the other clothes, the photo wealth, the Sakani, the um, Pixel, you're going to find this is, if not identical, nearly identical. And my guess is that the audio test is going to be the same. So I'm just going to unwrap rather than bore you with stuff that you're going to find on other channels that do much better reviews of this sort of equipment than I can. So again, like I started the video saying this is a little outside our wheelhouse, is just show you. So, you know, here's the little, I don't know whether this is transmitter, receiver. I think this is transmitter, sorry. Um, microphone input. The micro built-in microphone on the top. USB charging port on the side. The three buttons on the bottom. And the power button on the side. And obviously it's got a protective plastic cover covering the screen for you weight is very low if i was setting up a vlogging helmet and attached this to the helmet not a lot of extra weight um, which also means it doesn't have a lot of inertia so if i clicked it onto something and i'm bouncing around or it's clipped onto my helmet or my handlebars or something bouncing around it's not as likely to bounce off as something heavier because it's not building up as much inertia to take it off so um just a quick way to improve the audio for our channel here and for somebody else that's either just starting out or looking to make their next move. Uh, if you followed the phone mount video, you know that we were interested in doing some ride videos, but the phone mount that was chosen blocked the rear camera. So we have this, you know, thin little portrait mode front camera facing thing of my head bobbing up and down the road and you see a couple trees branches through the background or maybe the top of a tractor trailer going by not so interesting so i think the the next in, uh investment that we make will probably an, be an action camera which for whatever reason doesn't include bluetooth connectivity so i did a series on um, do I want Bluetooth in my helmet. I have two helmets that have Bluetooth in it and I describe why you may or may not want Bluetooth in your helmet and I have found a way to sync Bluetooth um, to the camera um, front facing and rear facing and for rear facing having to use Filmic Pro, which is F-I-L-M-I-C Pro, in order to get that um, capability. I don't know why the base level camera um, doesn't include the you know, Bluetooth connectivity for that. Uh, I also don't know why the action cameras don't pay the protocol royalty for the Bluetooth consortium to include it in there. Like, you know, even big players like um, GoPro you know, in the new version nine, they don't support uh, Bluetooth microphones. What, what the heck, you know, we got to cobble all this stuff onto a helmet in order to get you, um, you know, good quality uh, mic or just, you know, run a lavalier mic up into the mic in addition to whatever else is there. So I, I had, would anticipate that that's all going to be addressed next year because people are really making a lot of noise about it. And generally, you know, the, the manufacturers respond to the market and the cost they would have to pass on to us to pay for those royalties and stuff might be, you know, a dollar to a product, which I would happily pay not to have all kinds of extra devices and cables cobbled together just to, to do something simple, which should just be already be there at this point. So quite a bit to unpack and a lot of generalizations here, but I wanted to, um, share this with whomever is either an aspiring YouTuber or a traditional YouTuber or, um, you know, has just been kind of doing the same old thing for a long time now and haven't changed. And again, I have, I have personally changed my tune, um, and, uh, learned to love, and this is kind of a different subject. Maybe we'll just break this out into a different subject. And that is, if you're going to start making videos 
and you're wondering if you want to make videos to promote motorcycle and everything, what I would suggest is do one or two things. Either just, just post your ride videos or post your stream of consciousness and just get it out there. Um, hopefully you're somebody, there's another um, we're working on that. Hopefully you're somebody that can get their message out there off the top of head, you know, do that extemporaneous speaking. And if not, and you want to do higher quality productions or more technical productions or, or more complex content, you must be comfortable with editing. And this is not something I say lightly. Editing is a pain. It is time consuming and you will have to learn to love it. And I did not like that statement the first time I heard it. I took issue with it. I figured, you know, oh, it's all about the message. I want, I want to get my information out there. I just, I've got detail that nobody else dives into. And that's still true, but you need to put it out there in a way that it's digestible by the public. And that's done through editing. And editing allows you to put up graphics or, um, you know, put up a redaction statement if something has changed on your video since you did the filming, etc. And it, it's basically software familiarity. When it come when it comes down to it, all editing is is just familiarity with an app. And the more you use it, the better you get, and you start exploring features. And there's just such a great resource library out there for most of the major editing software. I'm using Shotcut right now, for example, and I haven't found a question on Shotcut that I haven't gotten an answer to. And I haven't got a question that I've come up with about filming via an Android S8 that I haven't gotten an answer to. That's how I wound up with uh, Film, Filmic Pro, F-I-L-M-I-C Pro. Uh, that was paid. I laid out 14 bucks for an app uh, to put on my camera. And again, with the frugality. So, you know, if I ponied up for it, it had value. And I, I tell you now, if you buy that, you won't be disappointed. But editing isn't fast. And I will spend, let's say, between creating a script and making a couple passes doing recording the video and um just just getting this content together and hopefully editing out some of these ums and ahs which i'm trying to get better at you know that that can be up to two and a half hours for maybe 30 minutes of content just recording the video then you get into editing you've got to watch this thing as though your viewer is watching it you know put the value adds in there put the visual aids in there that they might need to help better understand a concept realize if you're too close to the subject matter and you're assuming a certain level of understanding of your audience that just isn't there like you have it but it just isn't there for them or might not be intuitive for them and addressing that and filling in those blanks and those gaps that can be a multi-hour prospect so if you have a notion that you are going to create you know two three four five eight videos a day and have them edited and have them be quality and have them posted every day that might be just a little bit more than optimistic add to that if you want to post on multiple uh, platforms so if you want to be on instagram and pinterest and facebook and youtube you're going to have to customize these videos a little bit so you may might create a baseline video and then augment it and pad it and edit it you know multiple times for these other platforms that's going to take time right now i'm editing for youtube i'm a novice and i'm in my own way so it's taking me extra time but it's taken me a couple hours to edit for um, posting, you know, publishing rather, uh, something that's roughly, you know, between 25 and 45 minutes long. So something to keep in mind. And what I hope is, and again, I'm the geezer and geezer rider, but I've been in IT a long time. I'm hoping with um, exposure, you know, using it, comes familiarity and with familiarity becomes ex expertise and proficiency and I can pull up those production values with not only 
not investing more time, but actually reducing the overall time involved. And part of that, I think, will involve the uh, ability to become much more efficient at this part of the process, the recording part of the process, which is having this extemporaneous, you know, off the cuff conversation with you guys and gals, and also the ability to follow a script without being nosed down and, you know, mired in the technical and just making sure I've got everything that it was, was on my mind out to you guys because you know i i realize i've done this in the past and you guys don't want to see me read from a piece of paper but sometimes there's just so much content that i don't want to overlook anything i don't want to get lost in the process i'm trying to reduce the overall time the video um takes you know going going from these two hour videos down to an hour video down to you know 45 minutes or a half hour video all right well we definitely went down the rabbit hole on this one i think it'd be easier to describe what wasn't in this video than what was but uh, it was kind of a stream of consciousness and covered a lot of ground so what i owed you probably at the end of this was a recommendation on the altson wireless mic which is a rode wireless go knockoff similar to all the others and like i said there's other people far more equipped than we are to do um audio file tests and things like that um, I never did fire it up uh, it obviously has been fired up and been used successfully I did three recordings uh, one of which was with the Altson provided lavalier mic which I neglected to say in the earlier segment was included they include a lavalier mic so what I'll do is I'll play in succession some cheesy voice tests uh, one with the integrated mic that's built into the device itself. Another with the lavalier mic provided with the Altson. And the third test will be with this uh, pop voice, the one that I've recorded all the other videos with. So uh, you can listen to them. I don't think there's anything surprising here. If you're an audiophile or a sound technician looking for your IMDB credits, this probably isn't going to be for you. If you are looking to um, have a low barrier to entry to get mobile, and what I mean is, you know, not uh, hardwired tether to your um, camera uh, for your audio needs and get in there for under a hundred bucks, this is probably going to work for you. Um, I didn't do any range tests. You know, I didn't put out any long distances. There's enough other videos that are already doing that um, the quality seems to be the same you know up till about the 100 foot mark they you know claim longer range than that but honestly i can't see a need why i would need to be 100 feet away from my camera which is just a cell phone camera at this point so anything i'm going to view from that range is you know minimal value anyway so we'll go ahead We'll play those videos for you. You can make your own determination and I hope you found it helpful. Okay, so this is a test using the integrated microphone in the transmitter. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Test, sibilant S's, pop, pop, pop. Tony, Tony, Tony. This is a test using the lavalier mic that was included with the Altson wireless transmitter and receiver combo. Testing, testing, one, two, three, pop, 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 Tony, Tony, Tony. The test using my normal pop voice lavalier microphone that I've used to create all the other videos. Sibilant S's, pop, 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 Tony, Tony, Tony. S -s -s sound, 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 Tony, 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 pop, pop, pop. Anyway, again, I started off by saying this is quite a bit outside our, our normal wheelhouse, what we normally do. I hope that you found this helpful. I hope you realize that we are putting this out there to help you, to help the motorcycling com community, to help the fledgling YouTuber um, get the strongest foothold they can in the shortest amount of time and go out there and preach the good word. Hey, Motorcycling is fun. Motorcycling is good for your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, and it's good for the community. Ride safe. Namaste.